Since the time my tūpuna came and lived here, lots of other people have come to live here as well. And one of those was a particular woman, a special woman, who came to live here. She raised her family here. She was a gardener and a publican and a farmer and a nurse, and her name was Betty Gard. And she probably is most well known because she was the mother of the first white child to be born in the South Island. Betty was just 15 years old and living in Sydney when she met John Gard, a former convict turned sealer and whaler. Jackie Gard, as he was known, had been whaling in Cloudy Bay and took Betty there on his ship Waterloo. He had a whaling base at Tawaiti in the Tory Channel, and it was here that Betty gave birth to that first white child, John Gard. She was tended by Māori midwives, the only other women in the area. The whaling operation then moved to Kākāpō Bay in Port Underwood, which was closer to the whale's migration route. In those days, of course, it was all very, very basic. No power, no water supply, apart from there was a good creek. But they only lived in a one-room house and a clay floor. And, and through the whaling season in the winter, I don't know how she survived. <laughs> it was a tough time for the new migrants as ongoing battles between Ngāti Toa from the north and Naitahu in the south raged up and down the east coast. But Captain Jackie kept an uneasy friendship with Ngāti Toa chief Taruparaha and managed to get plenty of flax and whale oil to sell back in Sydney. It was after one of those trips to Sydney in 1834 that the most traumatic events befell Betty. On the journey back, their ship Harriet was wrecked on the Taranaki coast near Oponaki. Betty and all on board made it safely ashore, but a fight broke out with the local Ngāti Ruanui. A dozen sailors were killed, and Betty, along with her two small children, was taken captive. These events later inspired an acclaimed novel, The Captive Wife, by renowned author Fiona Kidman. My book was inspired by the courage and abilities of this remarkable pioneer woman. She had eight children in all, but none of her many descendants would be here today, but for one thing. When a Māori warrior struck his mere to Betty's head on the Taranaki shore, the blow was deflected by this, a solid tortoiseshell comb she had in her hair. It saved her life, but some of the teeth remained embedded in her skull for the rest of her life. The rest of the comb was saved to end up as a most unique artefact here at the Museum of New Zealand, Te Papa. Jackie Gard and the surviving sailors rowed all the way back to Port Underwood and Jackie caught a ship to Sydney. There he persuaded Governor Richard Bourke to rescue his wife and children and two frigates were dispatched to Taranaki. Thomas Waugh was aboard the HMS Alligator and sketched the action as the soldiers rowed ashore. They dragged two cannons inland and bombarded the hilltop pa, driving Ngāti Ruanui into the bush. Betty and her two children were rescued, young John being wrenched from the back of Chief Oa Iti, who was then controversially shot dead with many of his warriors. The loss of life worried both European and Māori, and hastened efforts to reach a more peaceful arrangement, which happened six years later when the Treaty of Waitangi was signed. Betty and Jackie went back to Sydney, where she became something of a celebrity because of her remarkable adventures. But New Zealand had taken a hold on them both, and in February 1836 they left Sydney for the last time and went back to Kākāpō Bay. Here at Kākāpō Bay, I can look at the stars every night of my life, at the sea and at all the teeming life of this bay. My bones will be laid in this soil. Betty's bones do lay in the soil of Kākāpō Bay, along with generations of her guard descendants. And she will forever hold a special place in our migrant history as the first white woman who chose to settle in Marlborough and live the rest of her days here.
Betty Gard was the first guard woman to live at Kakapo Bay. And now, nearly 200 years later, it appears I'll be the last guard woman to live at Kakapo Bay. <laughs>